Welcome to the 87th installment of Tala Alejandro, your number one place for sports, cars, beauty, and fitness. If you're a man, you're here. Miss Alejandro, but tell him. What you about to tell him, Alejandro? LeBron James' first game of the season since returning to the Cleveland Cavaliers was disastrous. <gasps> My New York Knicks. Spoil the party. You lose. These tough topics in the tell him zone. Tell him, Alejandro. <laughs> My New York Knicks defeated the Cleveland Cavaliers 95 to 90 and this was a very big game. It was the first game for LeBron James since returning to the Cleveland Cavaliers and he played an atrocious game. Statistically it's one of his worst games in his career. 17 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists on 5 of 15 shooting with 8 awful turnovers. Woo! Well it malo. He struggled and what I noticed was the offense for the Cleveland Cavaliers struggled. Once this team formed up, the Cavs team with Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love and LeBron James and a bunch of role players, everybody was like, well, we need to see if they can build team continuity, team chemistry and their defense. And their defense to me didn't look like the problem. The problem looked like their offense, specifically LeBron James's offense. Kevin Love had a decent game. He had a double-double. Kyrie Irving, I thought, had a good game too. But clearly LeBron James wasn't there and I thought the moment got to him. He was very emotional, I think. And I feel like as the season continues, he's not going to play as bad as he did yesterday it was basically because it was the first game his mom was in the crowd I'm sure he had his boys that he grew up with in the crowd and it's like he probably was trying so hard trying to impress everybody so you know he stunk up the joint shout out to my New York Knicks though because they put in that work let's go to my New York Knicks I want to talk about star Melo Anthony Melo had basically the game winning shot late with 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter and what stood out to me with Melo's game was number one Melo was inserted into the fourth quarter with about less than seven minutes into the game this is good coaching by Derek Fisher last season and in years prior to this coach Mike Woodson the old New York Knicks coach would run Melo into the ground but as you can see now the new head coach for the New York Knicks Derek Fisher is strategically keeping Carmelo Anthony fresh. I think this is a very smart decision. If you look at Melo's numbers in crunch time, so to speak, late in games, they're awful. And that's probably because he was tired because Coach Mike Woodson was playing him throughout the whole game. Whereas now, Derek Fish is keeping him fresh, putting him in at the right spots. Very, very smart guy. I'm interested to see how this goes on throughout the season. Another thing that impressed me about Melo, not just when he was put into the game and how he made the game win a shot, but the six assists from Carmelo Anthony. A lot of cats like to say the ball sticks in his hand, which is true throughout his career, and that he doesn't pass the ball frequently. I think Melo is a better passer than cats give him credit for. He just simply likes to shoot and likes to score. So the six assists from Melo is a big deal. But you know what, too? 17 shots to get 25 points, I think that's a good look. I'm used to seeing Melo take 20 or more shots, dang near 30 shots sometimes, and be very inefficient. I know cats are going to get upset when I say that because there's a lot of Melo slurpers, but Mr. Alejandro keeps it a buck and calls it like he sees it. Sometimes Melo does stink up the joint and take way too many shots, but he had a good game against the Cavaliers yesterday, so I'm going to show him some love today. Another person that stood out to me from the New York Knicks was my man, Quincy AC. He's a goon he had the ball head he had the goon bid and he had this one play where he had a put back dunk and just outworked energy and out he had me on my sofa screaming Aah! when he put that ball back through the hoop he had 10 boards and what was impressive about the 10 boards from ac he had six offensive rebounds i like how quincy ac is playing he reminds me a lot of reggie evans he's a worker on the glass i expect to see ac continue to get a lot of minutes another person that impressed me was Shane Lockett, one of the new point guards for the New York Knicks. A lot of cats are saying they don't feel like Shane Lockett can create for the Knicks or create once he gets into the paint. I think the kid has a lot of potential and I want to see where things go because if you remember last season I kept telling you the Knicks had problems at the point guard position. Now they have a little point guard that's young. Let's see if they can groom him, specifically Fisher, the coach who was a point guard. Let's see if he can show him a little something with the new triangle offense. Triangle offense. That they're running. And you know, Mad Cats is slurping up the triangle offense. 
I'm gonna keep it real with you. I have no clue what the triangle offense is. Everybody thinks they know what it is or says it's this or that. We just gonna have to wait and see if the triangle, quote unquote, is effective for the Knicks or not. Because if you was watching the game, there were some points throughout the game where they resorted to some of the stuff that they would do under Coach Woodson and even Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley, thirty-four, I got a Barkley. Was commentating about the game, kept poking fun at that. Like, look at that. They're going straight to Melo, going to JR and isolating and just jacking them shots. So we'll see if the triangle actually does help. So far, though, I must say, the triangle's helping Iman Shumpert. Offensively, he looked very good. But you know what impressed me about Shumpert? As the game went on, since our starting point guard, Jose Calderon, is injured, when Shane Larkin needed a rest and had to go to the bench, and Paolo Prigioni wasn't playing, Iman Shumpert ran a little bit of point guard, and I thought that was very impressive. If you remember Shumpert, when he first came to the Knicks, ran some point throughout the years. He's been playing the shooting guard or the small forward position. To see him run the point, I think that's a good look. I want to see Shumpert do good here with the Knicks. I wanted him traded last season, but if he continues to improve, it's only been two games for the Knicks so far, so we'll see what happens. If he continues to improve, that's only a good thing for the New York Knicks, and of course, obviously, I would want to keep him. I wouldn't want him gone. Next up, Amar Ray Stoudemire. I want to give him a shout out. What stood out to me was on back-to-back -back days, he played 24 minutes and he's healthy. So shout out to Amari. He ain't got no knee problems yet. God forbid. Now, next up, Jason Smith, the center, impressed me. He had 12 points in 19 minutes. But what impressed me was his ability to score, his defense, his willingness to play defense, and his ability to knock down the open jump shot. He was 5 of 6 shooting. If he continues to produce like that, I think he's going to get more minutes than Samuel Dallenbeer. And I think that's only going to help the Knicks offense to have a big man that can score in the triangle offense. Historically, that's only helped Phil Jackson's triangle offense, so we'll see how that goes. Last but not least, I want to show some love to J.R. Smith. I want to show him some love because he had seven assists. That's big. We look at J.R. Smith and we say he's a nut. He's a jack. He's just going to constantly shoot, shoot, shoot. He had seven assists, and what stood out to me about J.R.'s game was he wasn't erratic. And there was a nice bucket that he had late in the fourth quarter where he drove to the hoop and he did like a little Derrick Rose, Tony Parker runner. And I was like, wow, in years past, J.R. Smith probably would have went behind the back and did a stupid fadeaway. Instead, J.R. Smith took it to the rack and got the high percentage shot. So that's what's up. If you're a New York Knicks fan, we have a lot of things to be optimistic about. Of course, we're only two games into the season. We have to see where things go. If you're a Cleveland Cavaliers fan, Y'all will be just fine. I think you guys are going to win the East. Tonight, you guys will be playing against the Chicago Bulls, which is another top Eastern Conference team. You know I will be watching that game and tweeting about it, so look out for that. In other NBA news, did y'all see my mans on opening night? Uni Brow, Anthony Davis with a monster stat line. Damn, they had a triple-double with blocks. He's a beast. He's a savage. And I shouldn't even tell y'all this. Because Mr. Alejandro Top 5 ain't come through yet. It's Mr. Alejandro's Top 5. It's Mr. Alejandro's Top 5. But I'm going to tell y'all anyway. I think after LeBron James and Kevin Durant, I think Anthony Davis is the third best player in the NBA already. <gasps> I think he's a beast. I think he's actually going to surpass Kevin Durant. I think Kevin Durant missed his opportunity to be the best player in the league. And with the way that LeBron James played today, yo... I think Anthony Davis is going to be a boss in this league. In other news also, my man's my favorite player in the NBA, Russell Westbrook, broke his hand. I'm crushed by that. He was going against the Los Angeles Clippers. You know he's a competitor. I expect to see Russell Westbrook back probably by Christmas, maybe even sooner. And I'm wishing that he gets healthy very soon. There you have it, folks. Mr. Alejandro, tough topics in the tell him zone. Why do you think LeBron James stunk last night? Can LeBron, Kyrie, Love, and the Cavaliers get it together this season and be a championship contender? Will Phil Jackson and Derek Fisher continue to have my New York Knicks headed in the right direction? Can Anthony Davis continue to play at this elite level? And what will the Oklahoma City Thunder do now that both Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant are injured for a significant amount of time? Tell them in the comments. Tonight's horrifically black bow tie is brought to you by Satan. <laughs> Tune in for more sports, cars, video game, fitness, and all that. Follow at Tell Alejandro to hear my immediate reaction to live sports events. Or if you want to hear me cover a certain team or topic, tell them.
in Cincinnati is Halloween. I got a special cheap for y'all. TEA Outro Remix. Do it. Outro Remix! Woo! Turn it up. Hey, tell them. Yeah, some real ghoulish voices going on. Tell them 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 Show some love to my man, Michael Jackson, and pay homage to all y'all. Enjoy your Halloween. If you're going to the treat, do it safe. Make sure you check the candy thoroughly. If you're going to party, if you know what I mean, make sure you take care of yourself and dodge them eggs. Huh? Yeah. Mr. Alejandro. Woo! T A T A, we don't play, huh? T A T A, we don't play, huh? Get it. Mr. Alejandro. Woo! T A T A, we don't play. Tell them, tell them, oh!